Hey guys, thanks for tuning in. This is Optibotomous coming to you with another video review. And today we're going to be taking a look at the new Hot Toys MMS 309 of the Iron Man Mark 40, otherwise known as the shotgun from Iron Man 3. Another one of the House Party Protocol suits. As you can see, this is a Sideshow exclusive, which means that the only way to get this armor in North America is to go through Sideshow collectibles. For the package, very similar to what we got before. You kind of got like the little Jarvis sort of thing in the background. And then on the front, you have a nice image of uh, the actual shotgun armor. Uh, on the side here, it says shotgun. Uh, but uh, it is a little bit glossy there, which kind of looks cool. Uh, same thing in terms of the background kind of carries over there. And then you can see that the uh, rest of the figure kind of wraps around. Uh, on the back, you've got various warnings and uh, contact information and things of that nature. Uh, it is a bit of a shoebox package, so just slides open just like so. Then on the inside, you have the whole, you know, house party protocol, sir, with Jarvis talking. You got the shaded out image right there with, you know, the house party sort of armor there in the background. You got the cast and crew responsible for making the figure. And then you just slide this out just like so. And on the inside, you have the clamshell, which holds the figure, all of his accessories, and also does a really nice job of uh, protecting the figure. But for the package, that's about it for it. So without further ado, let's get this guy out here and see how cool he actually is. All right, guys, so here we have the Iron Man Mark 40, otherwise known as the shotgun armor, open up and out of its packaging. And like with all Hot Toy figures, uh, I absolutely recommend going over the instruction sheet. Now, some figures you really don't need to. This one, I definitely think that you should because there are some things that are on here that are different than a lot of other Iron Man figures. They've really incorporated a few new items that really do make this guy stand out from some of the other ones. But as you can see, it shows you how to install the, uh, the batteries, the various movements that he can actually achieve. On the back here, you can see uh, some more detailed images on how to swap out the parts, as well as uh, various warnings on uh, certain points on the figure where you want to be careful, as you know, uh, armor parts may collide and lead to paint baiting. So, um, like, like I said, with all Iron Man figures, you uh, really want to go through the instructions, and this is definitely no exception. Now, uh, coming down here to uh, take a look at his accessories, uh, as you can see, a lot of what he kind of comes with are just battle damage parts. Tony actually wore the shotgun armor while he was fighting Aldrich Killian. And that's where uh, Hot Toys kind of has taken some of their cues for some of the extra parts. Now, as you can see, you do get a little uh, compartment here with the batteries. I didn't put all the batteries in. I didn't need to put them in both hands to be able to show that to you. So I just put them in one of the hands so you can see the light up feature. But you also get the little wedge tool kind of thing right there, so that's pretty nice. Uh, then in addition to the uh, two hands that I currently have on them, which are the fully articulated hands, it also does come with a, a pair of right and left fists. Pretty clean on the paint job here. There are some scratches on it, just to kind of sh you know highlight some of the uh, stress marks and things you know, that the suit would have uh, just kind of in a battle, so really nice there. And then you do get a right and left a repulsor blast in. You can see that it's angled here at the uh, actual wrist, so you can have it positioned like that and having them shoot out little uh, energy beams but a real nice paint detail on here you got this very metallic blue and then the silver very much like the actual suit so the paint detail actually works really nicely and uh, complements the rest of the suit uh, he also does come with uh, this display stand as you can see he also does come with a little mini iron man figure now we first got these I want to say with the tank armor, which gave us uh, the Mark 9 and the Disco armor, uh, this one here we have the Python. You can see it just clips right on here. This little uh, blast effect is not removable. And uh, in general, I mean, it's like a non-articulated figure, but uh, it, it looks pretty good just kind of flying there. And then you got the little clip right here. You can put that on his back. Let me kind of angle up here. And all you do is you come around here to this. You got the nice, just standard display stand. Uh, it unfortunately does not light up. You got a little peg hole right there where where you probably could pretend to have plugged it in. You got a battery compartment that doesn't work, and then you have the dynamic, the flexible pillar here that allows you to position this kind of in a flying pose. You got the little C clamp kind of cradle with the foam on the inside that nicely protects the figure, the, specifically the paint job and the plastic and things like that. And then for this, all you do is you come around here and you kind of fric friction this in uh, just like so. Now, if you have those other pieces, uh, here we have the Disco armor and then obviously the Mark IX, and you can see that uh, they're actually all different than what we have here. So this is a new sculpt, which is cool. Uh, these all can also fit on here. So if you wanted to, you, you can drop Oops, you can drop your uh, actual figure. Let's see, get, get you to stand right there. You can take all these 
and you can position these on there. So you can well, knock that off. Jeez, I'm just dropping everything today. So wedging that back there, rotating that around. You can create, you know, like a diorama thing like this, moving him off to the side. Uh, so if you have those other pieces, they all can clip onto the same base, which is kind of cool. I mean, I guess uh, in general, you have three other spots that if they kept doing this kind of stuff, you could put three more figures on there and then just position these kind of how you see fit. But I kind of like this because these are a little bit smaller and they kind of hang off in the background. So it's like when you have that guy here, and obviously the big clamp, it's like he's more in the foreground, whereas these guys are in the background, giving kind of that uh, forced perspective kind of look, where these guys are off in the distance or something. So that's actually pretty cool. I dig that. And I really do appreciate how you can use the previous figures with it as well. Now, like I said, some of the other accessories are basically just battle damage pieces. You got this nice chest armor right here with a little a gouge kind of taken out right here. You can see the jagged lines as opposed to the clean side on here. And then you got some, not really bullet holes or anything, but you got some uh, denting and things right on there. Now, obviously that's going to replace the chest that's currently on him. And then uh, in terms of other battle damage pieces, uh, he does have these guys that this basically makes up his, well, I think that's upside down. Uh, yeah, well, no, no, it's not upside down. It goes like this. Uh, basically, this is going to replace uh, the torso area on him. So uh, that kind of sets up. And again, I'm going to show you how to attach all this stuff. But it's going to replace this area right here, which looks really very cool. You got some nice detail with the wiring. You got some kind of reddish paint on there. Kind of replicating, you know, like the superheated metal look when Killian actually did that damage to him. So that's actually fairly nice. And like I said, I'll show how to attach this here in a little bit. Uh, you also do get a battle damage side piece that's going to go right there on them again you got the nice the jagged busted out sections right there and then you also do get a battle damaged face plate you can see that it's kind of scratched up right across the mouth you got some dings up there it also does come with a regular one which does just you know have a clean kind of look to it and obviously the you know, style for this is a little bit different than what we're used to with you know some of the other iron man figures it definitely has a unique kind of look and for me everybody always asks me what's your favorite iron man figure in your collection and more often than not it's whatever one that i just got you know it's the newest one it kind of stands out but i also have you know a, a huge love for you know suits that are a little bit different looking and this is definitely one of them and coming in closer to take a look at some of those details uh, as you can see you do have the uh, robert downey sculpt in there i, I want to say that it's pretty much what we've gotten before I mean, you got uh, the little blood splatter there on his nose, uh, some kind of under his eyes. We, we've got multiple, I think, uses of this head sculpt. But it makes sense to include it with this because he did wear this suit, as I talked about. Now, one thing that I will say is that uh, this actually does feature a very unique light-up feature that is brand new. And I really do hope that they utilize this in every Iron Man figure going forward. And it's something that I really wish that they actually did for uh, the Ant-Man figure, that would have been awesome. What they did, uh, now you got the, you pop the head off and then you have the batteries and the on and off switch there on the bottom. I have it switched on right now and because it actually only has one head sculpt with it, they designed it where the lights actually work with the mask and everything so you don't have to swap that out. Basically, you got the little magnet that you, you can set the helmet up like that, but what they did was underneath uh, this piece right here is actually like a micro LED that is actually activated when you take the mask and you slide it down just like so. Uh, hopefully you can actually kind of see that. Uh, just taking it off, you can see that the lights are off and now they're on. So what you basically have is the LED that's underneath there and then when you bring this down, it magnetizes and it completes the circuit causing the actual lights to light up. That is amazing. And like I said, I do hope that going forward, that's something that they can utilize, you know, with the other Iron Man figures. I just think that that is a terrific, terrific advancement here. Now, it's not something that's all, you know, that innovative. The other the companies have done things like that and using the uh, the battle damage mask, you can see it also does the same thing. Uh, if you get it just right, you can actually, like right there, you can actually see the light turns on. So you get the little magnet, 
that kind of activates it. But uh, it's actually a really bright LED light on here and uh, you can see that it comes through fairly nicely on the eyes. You do have a kind of shadowy sort of a visor right here, which does look cool because this is a, a hyper speed suit. So it very much replicates kind of like a you know, like a test pilot kind of look, but uh, taking that off so that doesn't, well, I can just leave it right there. But again, great detail all the way throughout this. I love the color on here. The metallic blue looks absolutely terrific you see some nice silver also added on there like i said a lot of these kind of unique looking suits really are some of my favorites you know things like the heartbreaker bones you know the star boost all of those ones that are a little bit different are the ones that i think are the best that uh, you have a huge giant thruster right here which is what kind of lets them get to that you know hyper and kind of supersonic speed and stuff but again just great great paint detail throughout it some real great detail here in the legs you can see that the uh, actual calves get a little bit thicker as they come down really very nice you come around here to the underside here and again you got uh, these little th bits right here with some really cool kind of greenish paint on the inside kind of showing like superheated metal that sort of colored but changes and things like that i mean really cool so you got those little thrusters there you got little thrusters here on the side here with that same color that variation on the inside there just in general awesome you got nice detail on the bottom of his actual boots so the detail on this guy is really spectacular the color looks amazing you can see that he does have some wear marks that are just kind of standard on there but for some reason for me i i really love the the battle damage aspect on here i mean he was severely battle damaged in the actual film and it kind of makes sense to you know like i said include those battle damage parts with them and honestly i don't display a lot of iron man figures in my collection with the battle damage parts the only one that i have like that is the mark three because that's how it looked in the actual hall of armor but this is definitely one that I think I'll display with the battle damage parts. So first what you want to do is uh, pull this chest piece off just like so. And you can see, again, real great detail on the underside here. It really nicely captures all those little intricate details. Come around here to the side. We're going to remove this piece. And again, great internal detail. Uh, you want to take this little piece right here, uh, kind of line this up. Uh, it, it's a little bit tricky to remember which way it goes. But you just push that. In just like so and you can see that it exposes uh, the underside right here and then you take the uh, chest piece here we're gonna put that on there as well and again you just have some battle damage on there and then you got like that jagged mark right here that just kind of works with this other piece that kind of looked like this whole section was pulled out and then you know, getting this out was that the battle damage yeah so part of the articulation is uh it, this does extend and it makes it a little bit easier to uh, swap out these pieces this piece you just kind of lift forward and then pull down oh, this popped off so uh, that's one part that i've noticed uh, unless you push these in there very securely uh, they will pop off every now and then but uh that, uh, that there we go i don't, I don't know if i had that all the way in so you pull that in then you pull that out like so uh then you're going to replace it with this upper piece and then take this bottom section and again you want to if you don't have that that little tool handy you kind of just wedge this out and you see it pops out just like so fairly easily and then you take this section you put this right here let's see it's going to go wait which way it's going to go like that there we go. You put that right there. And again, you can see the, the exposed wires. You've got the superheated metal kind of on the jagged edges on the outside. Uh, bring this piece in. And then you got like little tabs that just kind of lock this in. So you push this in up underneath that, uh, that crevice. Lock that in like so. Just kind of push that in. You can bring that down like so. Did I have that? I don't know if I pushed that in all the way. There we go. Is that? There, there, maybe something like that. Uh, like that. So again, now you have the, the battle damage torso bit here, and then obviously if you got the battle damaged mask, you put that on right there. And you have more of a kind of true to scene-ish sort of look for it. Uh, I want to make sure that I have that all the way in there. But the absolute coolest aspect on here you can see that that does light up uh, the hands do have the light up feature as well you got the little uh, compartment here on the outside you just lift this off and then you got the switch right in here which is a little bit tricky to get to but uh, you get that on and you have the nice light up repulsor there for his hand and um, yeah I don't think I had that in there all the way so turning that off uh, but the the coolest part honestly is the light up feature here for his uh, torso let me get this back in and 
the, oh, there we go, in, in, in the process, knocking this piece off. So you can see that uh, it, it does require uh, some pressure to keep these pushed in. But the coolest part, honestly, is you come around here to the back and you've got this section right here that uh, pulls out. Let's see, there we go, pull that out just like that. And you got the lighting compartment here in the back that lights up his arc reactor, but it also lights up this section as well. And that actually does look really cool. Uh, I kind of wish that they didn't use a blue light underneath there. Uh, I kind of wish that they used a reddish light just to kind of match with, you know, the superheated kind of look. And obviously you got a very bright arc reactor right there. Uh, that's actually really cool though. In getting a, a better look at that, taking this out, take all this stuff out, take this piece off like so pull that off there we go you can see that you got that bright uh, blue led light underneath there which like i said really does create a cool look on there i i, I just really think that a red light would have been a little bit better now it's not to say that that's bad or anything it it's just the the, the overall appearance i think would have that benefited from that red light just because it, it would have looked a little bit more realistic, uh, I, I think. And again, getting that up there, pegging that in, collapsing that down. There we go. Is that, again, it's a little bit tricky to kind of get that tabbed up in there. But there we go. And then, again, this, this keeps popping out. Uh, so you, you do have to be very careful with this. Uh, it shouldn't have come out that easily, to be totally honest with you, and that's a little unfortunate. But that really does look very, very cool. And then again, you just got the little uh, light switch here, turn that off, and you can see that it turns off very nicely. But it, it is a really cool bright light. Uh, now for his articulation, some of the stuff is actually a little bit different. One thing that they did that's really cool is they articulated uh, this little flap back here that allows you to actually, when you move the head up, that whole section you can see flexes, which is great. So you can get a very nice flying pose with them, which does look really very cool. Now, because of the way that the uh, the shoulders are, I'm just gonna take this off, they kind of come up a little bit high. It kind of restricts him looking left and right. The head can kind of pivot down here in the lower section, but that doesn't really give you much left and right. So you're basically just stuck uh, kind of like with that range of motion, so not a heck of a lot. Which honestly doesn't bother me again too much because when you think about the, the function of this suit, you're, you're, he's not gonna wanna turn his head too much. Looking forward creates a more streamlined kind of thing, so that works. He doesn't really wanna turn his head too much because that's going to probably slow him down in, in some respects. So I, I kinda get that, it, it doesn't bother me all that much. Uh, the shoulders here, they have this little flex piece right here, but they also do rotate fairly decently, But you can see that they also do extend out to get a full range of motion with it without bumping into any of the uh, the panels or anything like that which is really nice uh, he does rotate at the upper part of the arm as you can see it rotates very nicely on that swivel joint the elbows here are on two joints but you don't get a ton of range of motion I mean, you can see this one moves forward and that one moves up a little bit so you're looking at maybe a a hair over 90 degrees not a heck of a lot but I love how as you move it these just kind of close off and just create a, a seamless kind of look I love that look on there uh, if you have these hands in here they're all individually articulated so you get a nice range of motion there the wrists rotate their own ball joints so you get a nice flex and range of motion there as well you can also put the well not that one but you can put the you know, repulsor blast hand in there creating a, a cool look for him moving down to the waist you can extend that up and he does bend a little not a heck of a lot he moves forward a little and then he can move back a little uh, he also does rotate side to side kind of pivots a little bit so you can get some uh, motion in his actual waist the hips here are actually kind of cool you got a little piece right here that extends out and this piece that moves forward and you can get him moving eh, about that far and then you got a little butt plate that actually does flex back so you can move it a little bit further back like so uh, but the the uh, hips actually do slide down so you can move them all the way up just like that you can move them back a little bit more you can flex the little butt plate up a little bit more 
and get a little bit further of a, a back kind of kick. They uh, move in and out. They rotate at the upper part of the thigh, and then you can see that the ball joint also does rotate, so you get a nice range of motion kind of as, as a twist going on there. Uh, the knees here, you can move those all the way back very nicely, and again, I love how that detail comes out when you do move it, just kind of filling things in. Uh, these little pieces right here, you can see these flex uh, real nice, and they can flex back down, come around here, you can take the ankle and you can actually extend that down as well. You got a little flex piece right here. Extending the ankle down gives you a nicer range of motion there. You can actually take this, move that a little bit forward. You can see sliding that up just like that. And then you can bend that just like so. So you get a nice full range of motion there with that ankle. I love the way that these panels kind of that detach that allow you to do that. I mean, that's really very cool so you can get a very you know deep bend here with the actual ankle joint that's really very nice and then because it's on a ball joint you've got a nice little pivot side to side and then the toe moves just a little bit so full range of motion really with the ankles and I, I love all those little extra little details that allow you to really get him into some wicked wicked poses this is definitely like I said I mean other than this piece that keeps popping out this is definitely one of my favorite suits to date, and I just, in general, think he turned out really spectacular. Now, like I said, a lot of my favorite Iron Man suits are the ones that don't necessarily have that red and gold classic look. And Shotgun here absolutely has that. The blue, the silver, all the various paint details that's put in here really do look terrific. And then the fact that it is a different kind of looking suit, just with the overall aesthetic, is really very nice. The articulation on this guy is really terrific. Some of the, you know, old sort of advancements that they've done, like with having uh, the hips slide out, having the ankles slide out, as well as having the shoulders kind of pop out, giving a much wider range of motion, are all really nice. And then new pieces, such as what they did with the actual neck, is really cool as well. The overall detail just on this piece is really top notch. I love what they did with the light up section here. Uh, a lot of times they would have just given you the battle damage parts, but by putting the LED behind it really does give it some flair. I don't think I actually showed this off very nicely, but uh, you got a very bright light up section here in the back, you know, when you turn those lights on as well, giving you that nice thruster kind of look. So everything on this really does absolutely impress me. Probably the most impressive is what they did with the actual mask. I mean, it gives you one head sculpt, and then you can also have the light-up feature as well. Uh, a lot of times they would have had to have given us two heads, one with just, you know, Tony's face, and then another one that has the light-up eyes. That's actually really cool that they did that. So all in all, I'm really very happy with this piece. Now, as an Iron Man collector, I, I get all of these. And like I said, usually the newest one is my favorite, but I really do think that this one's going to be my favorite for a while. At least until the next Iron Man suit comes out. But if you like this guy and you're interested in picking him up, he's available at Sideshow Collectibles. So all you have to do is click on the link down in the video description. You go to Sideshow where you can check out availability on this guy, as well as the rest of the Iron Man Hot Toy figures. But beyond that, guys, that's about it. So once again, I want to thank you for tuning in. This has been Optibotomous. Don't forget that if you like this video, to please like and share it. Also, be sure to subscribe in case you haven't already subscribed. That way you never miss a future review of mine. And as always, until next time, I'll talk to you later.